Day one, too many issues. How'd you go through that bumpy stuff? And because we're going downhill, you've got some gravity working there for you, so the car doesn't have to work that hard. Certainly, if we had to go the other direction, it would be a bit more hard work, and maybe that's what we're expecting when we climb out of this valley that we're heading for. Woke up, and it was just an awesome morning. It was looking like it was going to be just an amazing day up in the high country. Little did we know that it was going to be an absolute nightmare. There's a CV gone. We have made every mistake you can make. Come down into the bottom of the valley, it started raining, and now we've got the climb back out. The track is wet, steep, slippery, rocky. We've got ourselves into the worst predicament we could possibly be in. So we're gonna have to work it to get out of here. We're gonna have to push hard. So we camped at Bob's hut, woke up and it was just an awesome morning. Really, really peaceful, not much wind in the air. We hoped in the morning when we woke up, we we're gonna wake up to, you know, a white, white winter wonderland. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. I knew the GU was gonna have some problems starting, so I wanted to get on top of it nice and early. The boys from Clearview were up pretty early as well, just trying to sort out their Hilux. We're trying to diagnose the front end and see what exactly was wrong. The day previous, Jay from Clearview had a horrible noise coming from the back that up and pulled the wheel off. Anna jumped in and helped out there. Immediately saw that the CV boot was leaking grease on the inside CV, which is relatively unusual. If you're going to do a CV, it's typically the outer CV. It really doesn't take a lot to break a CV in one of these IFS vehicles. One of the hill climbs yesterday, Jay and Nick were pushing a little bit hard and the CV's cracked. It shouldn't make that noise. Simon had a quick look and said we could drive on it. So we decided to put the wheel back on and, and give the day a pretty good go. A big day of off-roading always starts with a big breakfast. Now this morning in the Oztrack kitchen, I've got eggs, bacon, we're toasting up some buns, and the guys are gonna have a ripper breakfast to get us started for a big day out in the tracks. All right guys, we've gotta get the Oztrack kitchen and the Oztrack camper all packed up and get ready to hit the tracks. It took us about an hour or so to get the GU running. How's it looking? Not good. So we had to make some plans as to how we're gonna finish the day. So we headed off in convoy for the day. So the mission of today is don't stall the car. Don't stall the car. Don't turn off the car. Don't stall the car. Planned on doing some of the harder track, but with the Clearview Hilux having a broken CV and Tim's car, we decided just to backtrack the way that we came in. We knew about the track we'd come in. It wasn't a particularly easy track, but we knew at least what that track looked like. It's better the devil that you know. At least we knew what we were in for, rather than something we weren't prepared for. Tim down the back there, how's Dougie running? 50-50 on how good it is. Jay, how are you feeling this morning? We'll be taking it nice and easy with you, three-wheel drive. Yeah, broken CV, it does it every time. Thanks for your help, boys. Hopefully it doesn't break today. We headed back over Mount Selma towards the Mount Selma track. We were greeted with some beautiful views. Like it was really, really sort of pretty cloud free. But as we were coming across the top, the wind was starting to pick up and you could see in the distance some pretty dark clouds starting to roll in. As we all know, the high country weather can turn pretty quickly and it was showing us that it might be turning sooner than later. So good idea to try and head back out the way that we came as quickly as we could. And just take it nice and easy. She's gonna be a slippery ride down. Bit of a slippery gypsy, this track. But I'm also pretty worried about this slippery descent with the trailer on the back. Looking very controlled with that trailer, so. Yeah, take it nice and easy. Tim, how do you think you'll go? Well, down is always pretty easy, so I'm looking forward to the down. The up, maybe, might be a challenge. 
Yeah, I'm the exact opposite. With the trailer pushing me, I'm a bit concerned about the slippery down. Climbing back out of here, I've got no problems at all. And little did we know all the drama that lay ahead of us. So we started on our descent down Mount Selma and going down is a bit of a funny thing. It's a lot easier on the car because you're not trying to work it as hard, but it can get out of control pretty quickly. As the day went on, we were going down extremely steep slopes and having to compare going up them as to going down them. Very hard to keep that back in behind me. It was certainly wetter on the second day. So after the cars had all been across it, we'd come down most of the steeper stuff and there was some interesting bits and pieces for sure. Amongst the group, there was a big spectrum of experience. Me, I've been in the game a little while. Simon is pretty much part of the furniture now in this industry. There was a lot of advice given in terms of technique. This particular track we're on right now, there's not a little defined ruts in it. It's, uh, if you've got a slippery track and you've got ruts, sometimes, especially going down the hill, stay in the rut you're less likely to have any issues, but when you've got a slippery track and no ruts, then it's a bit of a dynamite situation. If you find yourself on a particularly slippery, muddy section, especially if there are no ruts to kind of keep you in line, one of the techniques that I like to use is to drop it down a gear, and instead of braking, you accelerate down the hill. The car's kind of revving its head off, but it's using that engine compression to load up the drivetrain to gently and smoothly, in a controlled manner, take you down the hill. It definitely seemed a lot slippery going down than it did going up. I was behind Simon towing the camper trailer and you could see he had his hands full trying to navigate the tracks. Tight, tight hairpin guys, it's going to take a little bit of while to get around. Oh, you've done this before. Camper trailers don't typically belong in the high country but such a small, nimble camper trailer that Simon had tagged along. It seemed to be all right, especially with Simon's experience and a car with twin lockers. It's pretty capable, but the high country always throws a curveball. So just check the temperature on the weather app, and it said 1.7 feels like minus 3.4. It's definitely cold, definitely cold. Yeah, I think a lot of people underestimate and how much of a big factor the weather can be. We're all talking about how slippery this track is at the moment, but imagine if it was raining now, it would be a whole nother ball game. Troy, you've done a lot of four-wheeling. What would you recommend to people who haven't been to the Victorian high country before? One of the main things that you need to do in the high country is travel with at least one other. Essentially, the more people within reason, the safer you can be and the more control you can be. If you're going to start doing some active tracks as such, you need to make sure that you're there with a, a good team that can help do a recovery if need be, to make sure that if you do get into any issues or get stuck, that you can get yourself out again. Awesome descent down here as we drop down to the bottom of the valley. I believe there's a river down here. I reckon it'd be a great place to stop for lunch. How's that CB feeling, Jay? I haven't had any whining yet, but it does creak every now and then. Yeah, we'll check it out when we go down there. And when we stop for lunch, I hear you've got the new Clearview power slide in your vehicle. So you manually slide it out still, but to lower and lift the slide, you can actually use it with the press of a button. It holds up to 120 kilos and it's full aluminium, so it's a hell of a lot lighter than the, the original Easy Slide. And what sort of person does the power slide suit, do you reckon? Normally the younger generation, the kiddies, or the older generation that have arthritis in their hands or something like that. So they don't have to lift and lower the slide manually. Ironically, the trickiest part of the track was at the very bottom of the hill. There's a massive tree that fell down and obviously it's caused a bit of erosion. I don't know what kind of noise that would have made when it came down, but the root ball looked bigger than the car. One of the great things about visiting the high country is that you get to experience this amazing scenery and often that is no better illustrated than around river crossings and river junctions essentially. That turned out to be the last bit of low anxiety obstacles for the rest of the day. And that's when the fun really began. I reckon we'll pull up and have some lunch.
You made our way to the second river crossing. Step ups coming out of a river can always be a bit tricky. You really don't want to spend too much time stagnant in the water. You want to really keep your momentum through because that's when you start to lose traction. That's where you can start to get water inside the car. We're just about to head up the other side and it's just started to pour rain. And we went, this is great, broken CV. And now we're heading back up the hill with a broken car. Woohoo! We're through. We're through. So coming across the river, there was another log that was across the track. So you actually had to bounce up this, this log to get out of the track. A little bit technical, making sure that you didn't stall out on it and stop on it or hit it square on. So you had to come into it with enough pace, but not hit it. James, have you ever had to recover a wagon with a camper trailer on the back of it? <laughs> no, it's the first time for everything. <laughs> All right, show us how it's done, James. Takes off with a puff of smoke, gets up some good momentum. Oh, he's chomping into it. Bounces up over those rock steps. He's done well, he's up and over. Up until this point, it was a pretty easy day. Diff locks on. Simon was in front of me, and that's when it all started to go a little bit bad. Things started to go horribly wrong. I believe in you, Simon. <laughs> Here we go. All right, try and stay up out of the ruts. Oh, she's dragging me all over. All I could hear was the engine revving, and it did sound like he lost traction. No. Oh. So next thing I know, he's trying to back down, which did an amazing job back in that trailer down that hill. Oh, those brakes are struggling. Can we get going from here? Ah! There's a CV gone. On the second attempt, he gave it a bit and unfortunately a CV let go. Reckon we've done a CV. Damn. Simon, having a crack getting up this hill, he actually and Simon Effort blew another CV. Far out, man. Yep, tell me about it. Simon over the radio saying he's done a CV. Jay and I looked at each other and said, ah, oh, we've, uh, we've just done our CV as well, so uh, this will be fun. Had a winch, oh, at least four or five good full pull winches. Clear winching! Second winch. Third winch. Clear winching. Clear winching. Clear winching. Between James and myself, uh, we rigged it up multiple times. I think we did like a six full length cable pulls. <laughs> What's these red lights? Look how high up those red lights are. The train's starting to level out a little bit. Which is a big relief. <laughs> and then James from uh, New Tracks gave him a hand at the top to pull him over the last bit. I've got to do everything. So from there, we've decided to snatch from behind the Ultimate 9 GU Patrol just to get up the, the harder, steeper slopes. So we've got clear view snatching behind us. Going up, up this rock ledge hill. This thing's a machine, bro. <laughs> it is a machine. My turn in the trusty Nitro Ute. Had a bit of a scrabble, but got up at first go without any dramas. I've put the chains on. It's them mud and snow chains. We say natural environments, not rocks, but I'm going to see if they work. You've got plenty of traction. Okay, well there you go. You learn something new every day. Great weekend. Doing a nice little hill climb out now. 
Tim from Ultimate Nine is going to pull the Clearview guys up this second bit. James from New Tracks got Simon in the camp trailer with a busted CV. When it came time to tone the Hilux, we lowered the pressures and then I turned the throttle controller up to U9. Having the throttle controller set nice and high gave me the ability to control the momentum and the direction of the car much better. Hey James, appreciate the tow, thanks mate. How's your weekend been? My weekend has been fantastic. Yeah. Well, day's not over, mate. <laughs> Jim, how's your weekend been? Brilliant. It's always fun when things don't go to plan. Jay and Nick. Had a ball, mate. What's the highlight been for you guys? Oh, I didn't mind the spot where we stayed, Bob's Hart. It's pretty good. Yeah, weekend's been great. Didn't get to see any snow, but that's all right. Been a good challenge. Always good fun. I mean, if you get to paid to go four-wheel driving and it's not your car and not your fuel, it's all good. <laughs> Can I just say, watching Michael scramble up that very steep hill like a damn mountain goat was very impressive. What was your highlight for the weekend, James? I think pulling you out of this steep hill, this has been fantastic. It's when we started to come across these really chopped out sections on the top of S16 track, the burden of having to drag Simon's car and his trailer became insurmountable. Alright James, come back. I'm just going to give it a crack. I haven't got my front locker on, so... That was quite an exciting section there. There was a couple of ruts in the middle. There was quite a lot of movement side to side. It's dragging me. Alright, I want to try and put a bit of slack in the snatch so I can yank you a bit. The train was steep enough and lumpy enough it meant that James's car just couldn't get a decent pull. It just wasn't going to happen. We were diffing out. It was pretty gnarly. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, let's straighten up. Simon decided we'll detach. Leroy will get over that section by himself and then Simon will reconnect. I looked back and I had realised that through trying to get up this section of track, I unfortunately ripped a piece of Simon's car off of itself. All hands were on deck. It was hectic. It was freezing cold, probably so cold that it's going to be starting to snow up the top of the mountain that we had just left, which was ironic. The light was fading. We had hoped to be finished with this track well before then, and here we are still in the middle of the forest with broken cars and all the rest of it. Let's go, guys. Bring it on. The Ultimate 9 car, which was still towing the Clearview car, was having issues. There was a couple of times where it stopped. We were able to get it going again. We decided that we wouldn't lose momentum and we'll just give it everything. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Oh, there's cameraman. <laughs> that was fun. It's probably the most work I've done with the steel oh, yeah. episode. Thanks for the help, mate. Only time. Except for now, let's <laughs> unhook. Hold a little bit of pace to keep the momentum up and pick the right line, but. Luckily, we were able to hold it all together, steer it in the right direction, and drive that hill in one go. You're just steering as best you can, and it just goes wherever it's going to go. Yeah, baby, that was awesome! I ended up dragging Simon all the way out of the track just to be sure that he wasn't going to get hung up on anything. Pretty much our day was done, but my day was only just beginning. Um, can I get that again? Yep. Tim's GU is needing a bit of assistance. I think it's overfueling. Simon said, okay, you need to take Leroy and you need to go back in there because we don't leave a man behind. Effectively, we are Tom Hanks in Saving Private Ryan. We're going to be sent into battle to find the last brother because Tom Hanks is the hero. Luckily, they didn't need any help, and he was actually towed out of the track by Troy in the nitro car. They got out safe and sound, and everyone was able to get home, no problem. So despite the fact that this was meant to be a snow trip, well, I think we all had fun. Not another car in sight for the whole weekend. Victoria, we're just so lucky with what we've got out there, so you should be enjoying it when you can. It was a really good weekend. A lot of adventure, a lot of excitement. We broke some stuff. We stayed at a hut. I recommend it to anyone. We had a lot of fun.
I don't know what it is. It's not the fanciest car. It doesn't have all the bits and bobs. It doesn't have all the fancy electronics. This car doesn't even have the biggest tires. But what it does have is cojones. And that's ultimate. These 